Hi. Uh, this video is all about the aesthetic theories of music appreciation and the different perspectives that we bring to any of the artistic experiences that we have in our life and why we think those experiences are beautiful or not. Uh, a lot of philosophers have spent a lot of time talking about what is beauty and what is the aesthetic appreciation of an experience. And there are three different theories, formalism, referentialism, and expressionism. Those are the three theories that we are going to be using all semester long when we are listening to works of music in this class and deciding whether we like it or not and from what perspective of beauty we like it or not. Uh, I'll get into the details on each of those theories, but first uh, I want to point out that there is a PowerPoint that goes along with my video right now that I'd like you to follow along with each slide. I'm looking at the uh, PowerPoint in Blackboard titled Aesthetic Theories of a Music music appreciate, appreciation, and uh, I'm going to be turning now to the second slide that's titled Philosophical Extremes, Humean versus Cartesian. David Hume is a Scottish philosopher, and he's famous for many things, uh, one of which is the quote that goes, beauty is in the eye of the beholder or in the ear of the beholder. Uh, according to Hume, uh, aesthetic appreciation is something that is unique to each individual. And it's not up to me to tell you what is beautiful or not. It's not up to some expert to give a standard of what is beautiful or not. It's up to your unique experience in this universe as to what you think is beautiful or not. On the other side of that perspective, we have a Cartesian definition or approach to aesthetics uh, formed by Descartes. Uh, one of his famous quotes is, I think, therefore I am. Uh, but Descartes was also a big believer in the idea of beauty as an absolute. In other words, there are standards and rankings for how things can be beautiful. And some things are just more beautiful than other things. Uh, this Cartesian perspective uh, ranks beauty, says some things are ugly and some things are beautiful. And that perspective is about as opposite of the Humean perspective as we can possibly have. Uh, I am not here to discredit the Humean or the Cartesian approach to beauty, uh, but I want you to be aware that this is the perspective, uh, this is the spectrum of different aesthetic perspectives uh, that you will find yourself in throughout your life and in this course when we're listening to music. So uh, if you look on the next slide in the PowerPoint, I have some colorful quotes here, and I'm wondering which of these statements most match your perspective for what is beautiful when you listen to music. Uh, you can hit pause right now and then read these statements and then decide for yourself which of them do you agree with. If you only pick one, that's fine. If you pick all of them, great, you're a diverse thinker. Uh, but force yourself to pick at least one. Pause. Now that you're back, um, which of those statements that you most agreed with were blue? If so, then you might be a formalist. Which of them were green? If so, then you might be a referentialist. And which of them were orange? If so, then you might be an expressionist. If you found yourself having multiple colors, that's quite normal. We all wear different hats depending on what styles or experiences we're a part of or what attitudes and perspectives we bring to the art that we experience. It's okay to have multiple colors and multiple perspectives. It's okay to only have one definition and one perspective. But this video and this point is about grounding you and giving us a foundation that we can discuss from as we move forward in the course. The next slide is about defining more specifically what the formalist perspective of beauty is about. Some people call this the objective theory because it is based on appreciating music for the structural, technical elements of it and only those structural, formal, technical elements alone. If an artistic experience uh, connects with me because of its emotional valence, if an artistic experience speaks to me because it symbolizes or tells a story uh, in the musical setting, that's not the sort of thing a formalist would appreciate. Formalists are going to be very uh, focused on how complex and interesting and intellectually stimulating an artistic experience is. For example, many works that formalists appreciate tend to have very complicated structures like a Bach fugue or a very complicated symphonic uh, 
orchestra piece or some really, really talented virtuosic playing by performers as diverse as Jimi Hendrix to Bill Evans to Paganini. Uh, it can be any of these elements that we appreciate in music, but if it's a formalist perspective, it is strictly about the way the music sounds and not about the way the music makes you feel or the interpretations or symbolisms associated with that musical experience. The next slide is a subjective approach called referentialism. Referentialism is an aesthetic theory that refers to things outside of musical notes. So if this piece of music symbolizes man's inhumanity to man or a love that's been lost and found and lost again, if there is some kind of story being told or symbol or theme being expressed in the way the music is performed, that is a referentialist value of the beauty of a piece of music. For example, um, we're going to learn about Stravinsky's Rite of Spring is an example of a piece of music that tells a very profound, violent story. Uh, or if a piece of music reminds you or is about a specific place or a uh, heritage or a culture and that music resonates with you because you know that personal culture that the composer was writing about and wanted you to think about, then that is also beauty from a referentialist perspective. Uh, when we recognize the meaning that the composer or creative artist had when they made this piece of music and that's why we think it's beautiful, beautiful it's a referentialist approach to finding it beautiful. Finally, the expressionist approach to aesthetic beauty is very personal and very unique. Uh, it is strictly what you think is beautiful about this piece of music. It could be completely opposite what the composer or creative artist intended you to think and feel. Uh, it could be focused on both formalist and referentialist elements. It's whatever you want it to be. When you decide something is beautiful or not, and you have only your personal interpretations, only your personal experiences to guide that interpretation, that is an expressionist perspective of beauty. So the only examples I could give you are my personal examples. Uh, for me, uh, I find the piece of music, uh, say, Patathique, a uh, piano sonata by Beethoven, is very beautiful to me because I used to play this piece of music when I was a kid, and then I played it at my father's deathbed. And it has very powerful memories for me uh, because I remember him teaching me this piece when I was a boy, and then I was there playing it for him when he was dying. Uh, that kind of powerful emotional memory fuels and um, charges the way I listen to that piece for the rest of my life. Uh, whenever you have a personal memory that is triggered by a piece of music, and that's why you think it's beautiful, that's an expressionist uh, aesthetic perspective. If you ever listen to a piece of music and you have your own interpretation that you came up with by yourself, that is an expressionist perspective of music. And these are the three theories that I want you to keep in mind whenever you listen to any music from any style, from any time period, from any part of the world. Every piece of art can be approached from either the formalist, referentialist, or expressionist perspective. And that is one of the big things I'm going to be asking you to reflect on in each of the units that we study in this class.